All right, let's take a look at this lesson. We are going to be talking about limits today. Limits are the first lesson or the first unit that we have in calculus. So whether you are going to be taking calculus as a senior or in college, this is like your first, this will be the first type of lesson that you will have. So let's talk about them. What are they? What are limits? First of all, let's look at this notation. So uh, LIM is just an abbreviation for limit. It's the limit as x approaches a of the function f equals L. So as the graph, as the x value on the graph approaches some particular x value, the y value on the graph is going to, going to approach some particular y value. And so what we want to write here, and this is something that can be, can be confusing, is that the answer to a limit is the y value the function <coughs> is approaching. So this is important. This really hopefully gives you a framework of what in the world is a limit. So the answer to a limit is the y value that the function is approaching. Okay, so the answer is the y value. There are three different ways that we typically do limits. We do them um, using tables. That's way, oh, first one way. We use graphs, that's a second way. And we also do them algebraically, which is what we will learn next time. Today, we're just going to talk about doing limits using tables or the tabular, tabular method and using graphs. That's our goal today. So I'm going to draw an example. Um, you know how I'm really visual. I need to see it. I need to see it. I'm going to draw an example. Um, we'll just go out here to the side. And so think about this function right here. And we've got some, you know, some function you know, that does something like that. Okay, where this x value, we're going to call this x value A, and we're going to call this y value L, so that we can use the labels that they're using. So this, I'm going to, I'm going to draw, and this is an example that we're going to draw as we go through what a left and right-handed limit is. And so we've got this, you know, function, this curve, it does have a hole in it, which is okay. The hole happens to be at the x value a and the y value l, but that's fine. So let's just pause on that. I'm going to draw on this example in just a moment. I just wanted you to write it out first, but I want to talk about um, this next part. So as x, this little notation right here, See the little plus? It kind of looks like an exponent right here. X goes to A with a little plus. That means that this is a right-handed limit. X is approaching A from the right. Okay, so that little exponent kind of thing with the plus on it means that this is a right-handed limit and that X is approaching A from the right. X is approaching the X value A from the right. Underneath it, we have this A business with this other weird little, looks like an exponent. It's a negative sign. This is a notation that we use in calculus to show that this is the left-handed limit. It's describing the situation where X approaches A from the left side. In other words, X is approaching the X value of A from the left side. <coughs> So I'm going to pause there for a minute so you can kind of get your mind wrapped around that. We're talking about, and I'm going to show you on the graph, where we're approaching that particular x value, which is a, from both the right and the left. So let's go over here to the graph now, and I'm just going to write on here. So what in the world does that mean? Well, as we are 
coming from the right, we're headed from the right, um, this would equate to x is approaching a from the right. That's what's happening on our right side. x is approaching a from the right. We're on the curve. We are headed towards that x value of a. And I'll just kind of highlight down here. We're headed towards this location right here, this a. Now, as we're coming from the left, we're on the curve. We're headed towards this x value. We're coming from the left. This would represent x approaching a from the left. So visually, that's what it looks like. You're actually narrow, you're kind of narrowing down or coming closer and closer to that a value, which is an x value, from both the right and the left. So I'm going to pause there for a second. So this is just directional. This is a picture that should be in your mind when you're thinking about coming from the right, you'll be coming from the right hand side with a little plus, or coming from the left, you'll be coming from the left hand side with a little minus. Okay, we okay? All right, so what is significant about that? Well, for a limit to exist at a point, so for a limit to exist at a point, the right-hand limit must equal the left-hand limit. They must be the same. So this is very highly conceptual, uh, what we're talking about here. For a limit to exist, and this is what a limit looks like to exist, if and only if these two right and left-sided limits are the same. They equal the same number. And we're going to do some examples where you can kind of investigate what that looks like. Okay, so those are the concepts that we're going to be working on today. And I'm actually going to work on the graphing one first because it's really visual and I hope that helps you kind of internalize what limits are. What in the world are we doing? Okay, questions so far? Okay. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, I'm actually, strangely enough, I'm going to start with number three because I'm really visual and I really think that doing the graphing one will be more beneficial so you can really get a visual picture of what in the world's going on. So we're going to start with number three. Okay, so this first question is saying, uh, wanting us to figure this out, the limit as x approaches 4, what is that going to equal? Okay, so let's go over here and let's see where 4 is. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 4 right here. The x value. So we're approaching 4. And this particular function, this is f of x, and we're looking at f of x. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. So as we are headed to 4, we need to consider both from the left and the right. So coming from the right, I'm headed to, you know, we're headed to 4. Coming from the left, we're headed to the um, x value of 4. We're headed that way. Do we head towards the same y value is our question. And yes, we do. We head towards the same y value. And this y value, 1, 2, 3, this y value happens to be a 3. So both from the right and the left, we are headed to this y value of 3. Okay, so this limit equals 3. That's our very first limit that we solved. How are we doing? Okay. Okay. Now let's go to an x value. Our next one is going to an x value of 0. So see the number down there is significant. Um, we've got to really pay attention to what x is headed towards so that we can evaluate these limits correctly. So let's look at 0, x equals 0, which is right here. So we're looking at that location and we're going to come from the right, we're headed this way, and the left. We are headed towards that same y value, which happens to be a 2. OK, 
Okay, headed both from the left and the right, we get to two. All right, so we okay so far? I do want to point out, let's go, I want to just review a little bit on part A. When we went to four, the answer to the limit was three. And I hope that makes sense why it was three. But there's something else at four that's kind of weird that we need to talk about. Okay, there's something else there. And what else is there is this thing right here. That's at four also. What in the world is that? Okay, this is f of four. This is the function value at four. And the function value at four happens to be three, four, five, happens to be six. So it is certainly possible that the function value and the limit value could be different. I want you to notice that the function, the, excuse me, the limit value is three and the function value is six. So that they were different. Okay, we doing okay? All right. So these, uh, this one, C, E, and F are linked together. Those are all about two, going to two. We're going to two from the left and the right, and then the full limit. So let's, before we do this, let's go back up here and remind ourselves, for the full limit to exist, the right and left-handed limits need to be the same. For the full limit to exist, the right and left-handed limits have to be the same. Okay, I'm just going to remind you about that. So let's look at the right and left-handed limits. So we're going to 2. We're going to do E first. We're going to 2 from the left. So this is 2. We're going to 2 from the left. So I attach to the curve and I'm headed to 2 from the left. What is the y value that I'm approaching when I'm headed to the x value of 2 from the left? What do we think about that? Is that going to be like a number, like 25? This, it has an arrow. Doesn't it keep going forever? Right? So that means that this limit is going to tend to, T-E-N-D, that's a fancy calculus word, it's going to tend to negative infinity. Now we're going to make a note over here. So make this note with me. Note, never say anything equals positive or negative infinity. Instead, use an arrow like this. So this is important. It's a kind of a, it's a nuance here. And they get really upset with us when we equal infinity because it's actually not possible. It's not possible to equal something that's not real. No, infinity is a concept. It's not a number. You can't equal a concept. You can only equal like a number, right? I can equal five. I can't equal negative infinity. So just a note there, just trying to help out here. Don't ever say that. Okay, we're just making a note. Just arrow to it. All right, so let's go from the right-hand side. We're still headed to two, but we're coming from the right. So here we go, we're up here, we're up at the top here, coming from the right. What y value are we approaching when we're headed to two from the right? What is that, one, two, three? We're headed to five, aren't we? Okay, so this is five. Okay, that's a little troubling because these two impact this one. Does the right and the left-handed side equal the same value? 
No. So that means, oh, we're going to have to pull out this. This means that this is D in E. Now we need to make another note what this means. Let's go up here and make a note. So D in E means does not exist. And we need to add to this note. We must say why the limit does not exist. We don't really have a choice. We can't just be throwing around D and E's and not say why. I just want to point that out. So I've got a D and E right here. C is D and E. Why? Why is it not exist? Why does the limit not exist? And that's because the left hand side and the right hand side aren't the same. So here we go. So we say the limit, this is how we write it, the limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x does not equal the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f of x. And that's our reason why. That is our reason why. So this whole thing right here is bound together. The D and E is bound with the why. And the why is that the left and right sided limit don't equal each other. OK, how are we doing? We OK? This is a lot of concepts I'm throwing at you, right? These are limit concepts, really important limit concepts. All right, so let's move to D. X is going to 1 from the left. OK, we can do that. So here's 1 right here. And X is going to 1 from the left. So I'm headed that way from the left. Looks to me like we're going to a Y value of 0. OK, G. The limit is x is going to 1 from the right. OK, well, we're going to 1 from the right. I'm still headed to a y value of 0. So would the full limit exist? Would the limit as x goes to 1, just plain old 1 of f of x, exist? What's the answer to that question? Would it exist? Do the one-sided limits go to the same thing? Yes, right? They both go to zero, so the full limit would go to zero. And y'all are like, oh my gosh, Dr. Wright, you are crazy. Are we okay? <coughs> All right, last one. We're looking at what is happening as the limit uh, to the function, the limit as x goes to negative one. What's happening? Okay, so let's focus on that. <coughs> We're going to negative one. So we're headed from the left to negative 1, from the right, you know, here's negative 1. What is the y value of the graph? The answer to a limit is the y value. What y value is that approaching? Infinity. That y value is approaching infinity. Because it's headed to the same place from either side. Yes, ma'am. Oh, good question. So the asymptote is really what um, helps us identify that this limit is either going to be positive or negative infinity or D and E. Because when we're headed to a vertical asymptote, that limit will never actually be a number. It was always either going to be positive infinity, negative infinity, or if it goes, for example, let's just play with this for just a moment. If I have an asymptote here and it goes like this on one side and like this on another side, right, I'm headed to positive infinity over here and I'm headed to negative infinity over here, this one would be a D and E because they don't head to the same place and we would say that. We would say D and E and we would say from the right we're, or we're going to negative infinity, from the left we're going to infinity, therefore D and E. Does that make sense? Okay, wonderful.
Any other questions on graphing, limits by graphing, before we go to our limits by table? Okay. Here we go. We're going to do the limits numerically or by a table. So let's make a note over here. All these notes, don't you just love these notes? We're going to make another note. We will use a calculator or a filled in table for this type, for numeric. Okay, that's what we will do. You're not going to have to do these in your head. You're either going to fill out a table on your own or your table will be already <coughs> filled out and given to you. Okay, that's how numeric limits work. Okay, so this is where we need our calculator. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the easiest way to fill out a table by using your calculator. All right. So let's go to our calculator. Everybody okay? All right, let's go to our calculator. And uh, we want to go to a graphing page so that I can input that function value. So the function is, let's see, control divide. So it's x minus 1, <coughs> x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. And I'm just going to enter it there. I'm just going to hold it there. I'm just putting it there to hold it. That's what I need that for. I'm going to go to a calculator page. Okay, so we're okay. So I'm just holding it there. So control doc gives me another page. I'm going to do a calculator page here. And what I need, so let's look at the table again. What I need is the y value at a half. I need the y value at 0.9. I need the y value at 0.99. I need like 10 different y values. That's a lot of different y values. So this is, to me, the fastest way to get your y values. So that's what I'm showing you. So I put this in the calculator, x minus 1 over x squared minus 1, this part right here. And now we're going to pull, use our calculator to get all these y values. Okay? So here we go. So we're on a calculator page. If you hit the VAR button, see the VAR button? It has F1 there. That's where I put the function. F1 of, and my first um, y value, I want um, the y value at 0.5. And I get 0 0.66, well, all of that. Really, for these kinds, for the numeric limits, we need to go five or six decimal places. I'm just saying, we need to go five or six decimal places. So let's go here and let's write that down. So 0 0.66667, 0 okay. Back to our calculator. I'm going to scroll up and grab that and pull it down. And then I'm going to back up and change that number. So the next one was 0.9. So I'm going to make that a 0.9. And there's my y value for 0.9. It's 0.526316. Okay, so I go back here. We're going to put in 0 0.526316. Okay. All right, so is everybody okay with the calculator input? Can I just fill out the rest of the table? We all know how to do that. Okay, good. I'm just going to fill out the rest of the table. So then I got, because I did all this, then I got 0 0.50251, 0 0.50252, 0 0.50253, 0 0.50254, 0.50025. On the other side of the table, it asked me to do 1.5, which is 0 0.4. Then 1.1, which is 0 0.47619. Then I have 0 0.497512. 0 0.49975. And 0 
499975. So let me give you just a moment to um, fill in that table. So go ahead and fill in that table. How many digits did you say we have to do? Like, f it should be five or six. Five or six digits. How can we change our calculator settings to get Oh, one? good question. So let's go back to the calculator. And so to change the settings, um, we go to the on button, and then we go to number five settings, and then we go to document settings, and I have fixed six. You should have, I, I would recommend fix six. Before we did fix four, and that's all we needed for what we were doing. But in calculus, it would be handy if you wrote fixed six. Then you never have to mess with it and change it again. Okay. Just fixed six. And if you want that many in the grapher, you have to change it in the grapher also. So just so that we can go to, let's go to our recent document, our current document. <clears throat> so if we go over here, come on, you can do it. There. Um, we would need to change it in the graphing settings, which would be um, menu, um, settings, graph and geometry settings. Um, I could put fix four or fix six there too. This is just where you would put it if you want it to change it in the grapher also. Okay, is that good? So I that's what I recommend is fixed. Um, you can do fix four for the calculator or for the grapher and fix or just do fix six. That'll just fix you up perfectly. All right. So let's go back over here. And let's see where we are. Okay. So what are we doing here? What in the world's going on? This seems like what in this what is this thing for? Think of it as a number line with one. One is right here on the number line. And these numbers are smaller than one, the x values. So I'm coming from the left, going to this side. And these numbers are bigger than one. And on this side, I'm coming from the right. I'm really doing my from the left and from the right business. And what I want to focus on is when I'm closest this down here at the bottom is when I am closest to one on my table from the left and the right. That is the closest that I've gotten. We could certainly get closer, right? We could do 0.99999. I mean, we just keep adding nines and get closer and closer. But this is what I want to focus on, this, this bottom row. And I can see from the left, from the left, I'm headed to 0 0.5. And from the right, I'm headed to 0 0.5 because 0 0.4999 is 0 0.5. So my answer to this limit equals 0 0.5. And that's how a tabular or a limits, numeric limits work. You make a table, you look to see from the left and the right what you're getting closer to, and then there's your answer. Okay, so our answer is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, we doing okay? All right, we have one more example. Okay, and I'm just gonna admit, this is like a little tricky example. I wouldn't give you anything like this, ask you to do it with a table and trick you like this, but this one, I'll just say, doesn't really work with a table, and I'm gonna show you why. It doesn't work numerically, and I'll show you why. Oh, and by the way, oh, this is trig. Isn't that so exciting? You're like, oh, yay, we've got trig in this unit. Yes, we do. Yippee. OK, I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to type in this part, sine of pi over x. Okay, So we're going to go to our, oh, why not? I'll just do a new graphing screen. So control page, let's just do a new graph. Why not? And then I'm going to put in sine. Oh, please be sure you're in radians. When we're with trig, we need to be in radians. So we're going to do sine of, we'll do control equals, so it's pi over x. 
sine of pi over x. That's our little guy, and that's f2. Keep in mind it's f2. So we're just going to put it there. Then we're going to go back to our um, this little guy. So we're going to do var f2. That's the one with the trait. That's the sine one. Now what are we looking for? Let's look at our table again. We're looking for one and then one half and then one third. I'm going to do those uh, one and then one half and then one third. Okay. All right. So let's do one, and I get zero. Mm, okay. All right, well, let's see what one half gives me. So one half, F2 of one half gives me zero. Okay, that's weird. That doesn't seem right. Um, let's do F of one third. Uh, zero. Hmm. Let's think about that. If all of these are zeros, what and they are all zeros, what in the world does that mean? Okay, as I'm headed to zero, my y value at one is zero, my y value at one half is zero, my y, doesn't that seem messed up? Isn't there something wrong there? Do you think it's possible to be a straight line all that time? No, no, not with a trig function. There's no straight horizontal lines for forever on a trig function. So let's, so what that means is that this table, the table is misleading. It's misleading. And we need to graph it. We need to graph the function and zoom in. <coughs> to x equals zero. That's what we need to do because this table, there's something wrong. We need to figure out what's wrong. This, there's something wrong. We shouldn't be getting just zeros like that. That's weird. Okay. And again, I wouldn't have you one uh, do like this on a test where it's like a trick. This is kind of like a trick. Okay. So let's go and look at our graph. Well, first of all, that kind of looks messed up. Look at that there in the middle. There's something weird going on there. So let's zoom in. So menu, window zoom. We're going to zoom in. And I want to zoom in at x equals 0, right there. Oh, my goodness. I got it closer. Did that help any? Are we seeing a y value that we're approaching? Is that helpful? Okay, let's try it again. We'll try it one more time. Let's zoom in one more time. So window zoom, zoom in. We're going to zoom right here. Oh my, that's not any more helpful. Does it appear that we're approaching one particular y value as we get closer and closer to zero? <coughs> it does not. This is actually, this limit doesn't exist due to oscillating behavior. That's a thing. This is called oscillating behavior. Okay, and this is totally messed up. This limit does not exist at zero. It's messed up. If I get even closer, it's even worse. Right? It's just not, it's not having it. It's having none, none of it. So what do we write? We say that this is D and E. And we always have to say why. Remember, don't ever throw out a D and E and don't say why. Due to oscillating... behavior. And this whole thing is the answer. D&E due to oscillating <coughs> behavior.